Hi everyone, welcome to this review where we're going to review rational exponents, exponential functions, and then growth, decay, and compound interest formulas. Ready? Okay, let's take a look. So first one, write the expression in radical form. 13x to the 1 half. So what we know is that 1 half power is only going to the x, and the 1 half power really means the square root. So what this is saying is just simply 13 times the square root of x. That's it. That's the answer. Now, the 1 over 13 over 13x doesn't make any sense. 13x squared doesn't make any sense. You might get it confused with square root of 13x, but that would mean that the entire 13x is being raised to the 1 half power. That's when it would look like square root of 13x. Good. Okay, for number 2, square root of 64. Square root just simply means what number multiplied by itself two times gets me 64. It's 8. That's it. Doesn't get any easier. Number three, simplify the expression. So this next one, 64 to the one-third, well, that actually means what's the cube root of 64? <coughs> Excuse me. What number multiplied by itself three times equals 64? So it's definitely not eight. Two times two times two is eight, not 64. Three times three is nine times three is 27. Four times four is 16 times another 4, 64. So 4 threes multiplied together get you 64. So the cube root of 64 is 4. Number 4, simplify this expression. So 1,000 to the 2 thirds power. What that's actually saying is find the cube root of 1,000 and then raise it <coughs> to the second power. Well, the cube root of 1,000, what number multiplied by itself 3 times gets you 1,000? It's 10. 10 times 10 times 10. So the cube root of 1,000 is 10, and then I just have to do 10 to the second power, 10 to the second power, 10 times 10, 100. Easy. Number 5 and 6 are both about solving exponential equations. So 2 to the x minus 6 power equals 128. The process for solving an exponential equation is to rewrite both numbers so that they are the same base. So I want to rewrite 128 as a base of 2. Let's see, how many 2s do I need to multiply? So 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, times 2 is 32, times 2 is 64. Oh, 64 times 2 equals 128. So how many 2s did I do there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 128 is actually 2 to the 7th power. <coughs> Once my exponents are equal, I just simply, I'm sorry, my bases are equal. I simply set my exponents equal to each other. x minus 6 equals 7, which then means that x equals 13. That's it. Awesome. Let's do the next one. Same skill. 3 to the x minus 5 power equals 27. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I'm going through my asthma this time of year. So I want to rewrite 27 as a base of 3. So I have to ask myself, how many 3s do I multiply to get 27? Well, 3 times 3 is 9, times another 3 is 27. So I need 3 3s. I then simply set my exponents equal to each other. x minus 5 equals 3, which leaves me with x equals 8. Pretty easy. Like, really, not bad at all. <clears throat> Number seven, the ordered pairs of 1, 2, and 2, 4 go with which ex exponential function? So first option is y equals 3 to the x. So let me test this out. Um, 2, 1. So if I did, well, 2, right, because 1, 2 is an ordered pair, so x, y. So if I test that, is 2 equal to 3 to the first power? No. And if I check 2, 4, 4 is not equal to 3 to the second, so no. Next one, y equals 2 to the x. Okay, so is 2, the y, equal to 2 to the first power? Oh, yeah, that works out. How about the other ordered pair of 2, 4? Is 4 equal to 2 to the second? Yes, it is. Okay, that looks great. And if that looks great, then guess what? I don't even have to test the other ones. It's not going to work, which, by the way, 1 half to the first power is just 1 half. It wouldn't be equal to 2. Definitely one-third would not give me that answer. Number eight, does the data set display exponential behavior? So basically what happens when you look at a set of ordered pairs 
is that the y, the X values are just going to be pretty constant. Like there's going to be no big deal there. What we want to look for is, is there a pattern going on with the Ys? How do I go from one Y to the next? So when I look at this, one to five, I'm either adding by four or multiplying by five. Well, if I notice I multiply by five there and, oh, I keep just multiplying by five, that's exactly what an exponential behavior function would look like, that the Y values are multiplying at a constant rate. So the answer is yes. Had they been adding or subtracting at the same number, then it would be linear. Number nine, complete the Y values for the exponential function given the X values. So I have X values of negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. And I have this function Y equals 3 to the X minus 1. <coughs> All right, so I'm going to plug these in. So ready? If I plug in a negative 2, 3 to the negative second, and then minus 1. So 3 to the negative second is 1 over 9. 1 over 9 minus 1 is negative 8 ninths. If I do 3 to the negative first and then minus 1, well, 3 to the negative first is 1 third. 1 third minus 1 is negative 2 thirds. These are going to be a little easier down here. 3 to the 0 power minus 1, well, 3 to the 0 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. 3 to the first power minus 1, well, 3 to the first is 3. 3 minus 1 is 2. And the last one, 3 to the second power is 9. Minus 1 is 8. And I can easily see my answer of the second one on that screen. Number 10, the domain of all exponential functions is. So it doesn't matter what my exponential function looks like. When I graph it, it doesn't matter if it's growth or decay. This curve will eventually go through every positive x value going this way. It'll go through every negative x value going that way. Eventually, every x value will be part of that graph. So the domain Luckily for us, it's always the same answer. It's always all reals. Uh, look at the y-intercept here. So the y-intercept is where it crosses the y-axis. I can see that this crosses the y-axis down here at negative 2. So I guess that's, that's my answer is that's negative 2. Find the range. So the range is going to be one of these inequalities. Now, range deals with the y-values. So I can immediately look at these answer choices and be like, the x-values don't make sense. It's either y is greater than negative 3 or y is less than negative 3. So I can look at this graph and see, ooh, that that curve is approaching the horizontal line of y equals negative 3. The whole graph is above it. The whole curve is above that line. So for this one, I'm going to say y is greater than negative 3 because it's approaching that curve, that line. The curve is approaching that line of y equals 3, negative 3. The whole graph is above it, so we say it's greater. Whereas in the next question, you look at this range, oh, the y values – well, I see that it's approaching what the horizontal line of y equals 2, but the whole graph is below it. So when it's below it, we would say y is less than 2. Number 14, which e equation ex uh, represents exponential growth? So <clears throat> you have your growth formula. Whoops. All right, all right. So you have your growth formula, and the exponential growth formula looks like y equals a times 1 plus r to the t power. So when you do 1 plus a rate, you're going to get a number, whatever that number is, is going to be greater than 1. Okay? When you have decay, you have y equals a times 1 minus r to the t power. And what's going to happen when you do 1 minus r, that number there inside the parentheses after you do the subtracting, that number would be less than 1. So if I look at these functions, if I want to see growth, I want to see a value inside the parentheses bigger than 1 raised to that power. <coughs> Excuse me. So the first one, that's less than 1. y equals 7x, that's a linear function. That's just a straight line. Ooh, the third one, 1. 1.2 to the x power. That's definitely 1 plus a decimal rate. Looks good. And the last one, y equals <laughs> negative 0.3x. That's just linear. Whereas now when I ask you what's the decay, same answer, it's just a different order, it would be the one with 0.56 inside the parentheses because 1 minus some rate as a decimal is going to give me that. And when I put that in my calculator, I'm going to definitely see that it gives me a decay. <coughs> All right, number 16. A home was purchased in 1985 for $125,000. If the, home, if the value of the home increased 2.5% each year, what would be the value of the house by 2025? Round to the nearest whole number. 
So y equals a times 1 plus r to the t power. My initial value is 125k. 1 plus the rate, so 2.5% would look like 0 0.025. 2, ooh, how many years have gone by from 1985 to 2025? That would be 40 years. So let's see how much this value of this house went over the course of 40 years. So I'm just going to clean this up. 125,000 times 1.025 to the 40th power. This is definitely calculator work, so let me grab my calculator. I'm gonna literally type this in exactly the way it looks. I'm not gonna mess with anything. Okay, so that's how I typed it in. And I'm gonna press enter, and there is my answer. And this should be the answer that you have on your calculator, no matter which calculator you're using. The answer is 335,000. $632, and it rounds to 98 cents. Now, the problem does say round to the nearest whole number. Ooh, I don't love my answer that I had on here. I do need to do a little fixing, it looks like, but um, 335,632 would make the most sense, even though it's really 33. I got to fix that. Number 17, a car was purchased for 31000 in 2006. If the value of the car depreciates by 7%, so depreciate means it loses value. So that's going to be my decay formula. So the only difference is the plus sign becomes minus. So y equals 31,000 times 1 minus, so 7% looks like 0 0.07. From 2006 to 2017, that's 11 years. So let's see what the car value is here after 11 years. So this is going to be 31,000 times a dollar minus seven cents is just 93 cents. And now I'm going to type this in exactly the way it looks. 31,000, open parentheses, 0 0.93, close parentheses, carrot 11. So this is what it would look like typed in. Press enter. And there's my answer. So my answer is it would be $13,953.21. This one also does say to the nearest dollar. And so it would be 13 nine, five, three. Excellent. Number 18, the value of a jet ski is decreasing 6% each year. All right. If the jet ski was purchased for $8,000 in 2015, how much will it be worth in 2023? So y equals a one minus r. I know I'm still using this decay formula because the value is depreciating. 8,000 times one minus 0 0.06 from 2015 to 2023, that's eight years. So now this is 8,000 times 0.94 to the eighth power. Again, again, that would just be calculator work. So 8,000, open parentheses, 0 0.94, carat eight. That's what it should look like typed in. Press enter. And that's what I would be getting as my answer. So it would be $4,876.55 sense. Awesome. <clears throat> Last two are about compound interest. Olivia deposits $350 into a bank account that compounds interest at a monthly rate of 2.6%. If Olivia leaves her money in the bank for four years, how much will she have? All right. So the formula for compound interest is P times one plus the rate divided by N to the NT power. P is the principal. It's the initial amount. So 350 times 1 plus the rate 2.6%. So that would be 0 0.026. Now N is how many times it's compounded each year. It says it's compounded monthly. How many months are there in a year? 12. So when you see monthly, N is 12. To the 12 times, okay, how many? T is the amount of years for four years. All right, so I'm going to clean up what's in my parentheses here. So I'm going to <coughs> divide out my fraction and then add one to that. Okay, so I get a repeating decimal, 1.0021 and then six repeating to the 48th power. 
I'm going to leave that fresh in my calculator because I want to get the most accurate answer possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep that in my calculator. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to raise it to the 48th power. So caret 48. I'm going to raise that answer to the 48th power. And then I'm going to take that answer now and multiply it by 350. That's how you get the best answer. And I end up getting $388.32. This is what your calculator should look like for that. <clears throat> Last one. Nathan deposits $600 in a bank account. So I'm going to just get my formula set up. Same formula as last problem. So Y equals, he deposits $600 in a bank. That compounds interest quarterly at a rate of 4.75%. So 0 0.0475 quarterly. Quarterly, there's four quarters in a dollar. There's four quarters to the year. That would be four times. So to the four times, how many years? 15 years. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to clean up what's in my parentheses. So I'm going to do 0 0.0475 divided by four. Then I'm going to add one to that. Okay. That looks like a pretty good number. So 1.0, um, sorry, 1.011875. And then I'm going to raise that to the 60th power. That I could type in one big swoop. So 600, open parentheses, 1.011875, close parentheses, caret 60. Press enter. And we should be getting 1,218 and 33 cents, which is my first answer. So that worked out perfectly. I hope this helped you. Good luck on your quiz. Bye.